What's going on, folks? Welcome to the Fantastic Forum Fillmore Special, where we're going to talk about the 2002 Disney animated series Fillmore. If you're not familiar with Fillmore, it is a cartoon that is basically a, or takes a strong influence from 70s cop shows. But it's set inside of a school where the safety patrol are the cops, and of course, the, the rest of the kids end up being the criminals. It's a wild ride. We're going to talk about it. And, and if you haven't seen it already, we hope to educate you a little bit about what the show is and maybe excite you and entice you to watch it yourself. Uh, whenever it is, they'll let you do that. <laughs> wherever it is that you might be able to find it. And with that said, uh, I got Jay here, of course. I guess I should say I'm Mary Young. Uh, we're going to talk about... Fillmore, I'm on it. Episode one, Jay. So episode one, Tamara Stahl, uh, basically a tagger, a new tagger by the name of Stainless is going around marking up all the bathroom stalls and the safety patrol has to figure out who it is in order to s stop them uh, from basically replacing the stalls cost money and the principal mm -hmm. wants them to stop them so that they don't have to keep replacing all these stalls. Um, right. Principal being kind of like the mayor in those old 70s cop shows. Right, right. It was pretty funny. Right. I mean, that that's right from the jump. That's one of the, the joys of Fillmore in the sense that the school is like an analog for the city. Like you said, the principal is the mayor. You know, the safety patrol has a, a chief. <laughs> which you know and, and it's, it's just the, like I think that this is one of these things that really hit home for me uh, when I first saw this cartoon back in the day um, because like I actually was on the safety patrol of my school like I don't know if you even know that Jay because we didn't go to grade school together no but... you told me before oh okay I just yeah I wasn't well listen I don't know if that's necessarily something that I was proud of but I'm sure it came up in conversation because we talked all the time. <laughs> I think it came up when we were talking about Fillmore. Did it really? I that makes sense. So. That makes sense. Like, I just don't remember. But yeah, but it's just so funny because, like, the idea of a safety patrol person, like, acting like a cop by itself, it, like, that by itself is enough to, like, it, it's, it's hilarious, the idea, because if you've ever been on the safety patrol or if your school has a safety patrol, you realize just how little authority these children actually have. Like, I can speak to it firsthand. Like, you know, like, no one ever listened to me. <laughs> you know what else was particularly funny to me is that the chief of the safety patrol is actually an elected position. <laughs> like, like, one of the episodes, he's up for re-election. <laughs> so he's, like, trying to navigate a case around it. <laughs> Hey, you want to roll the dice with your career? Roll those dice, Dutch. Just remember what's at stake here. Your second term as junior commissioner. Hey, Fillmore, Ingrid, we need to talk. Sure. Hey, congrats on your second term as junior commish. I hear it's a done deal. Not yet. I got up here before the school board on Friday. They'll review my record and decide whether or not I'm worthy of serving a second term. The thing is, the shredder isn't caught by then. What do you want us to do? That's funny. So, so the safety patrol, uh, basically, I like the the kids that are on the safety patrol, at least the ones that we see in these first initial episodes, basically act kind of like detectives. Um, you know, they're not necessarily like beat cops or the ones that we follow. They're more like detectives. But you know, you do have like 
other people, other members of Safety Patrol that like have other roles. Like you have like forensics and like <laughs> you know, like you know, like it's it's it, it's like really interesting because like I mean, like the, the Safety Patrol kids have desks. There's like an <laughs> office for right. Safety Patrol, which. I mean, don't get me wrong. Six to have a crime scene photographer. Right. <laughs> right. It's like, dude, it's it's amazing just the way that, like, how, well, I, I won't say how it fits, but how they make it fit is very probably the way, they, the way to say it. Like, right. the way how they, they choose to just set this whole thing, uh, that, that whole, like, uh, genre in a school and how they're able to like transform the different things. Like even with this first episode, like the idea of them getting like this bathroom redone is almost like, you know, like a public works kind of project. Like, you know, like there, there's literally like a ribbon cutting ceremony <laughs> for the bathroom. <laughs> it's, right. just, it's just like, it's like that in and of itself because, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that's how the, the episode opens. Right. A ribbon cutting of the, the to unveil the the new bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, geez, so, man. this episode, it, uh, in order to help them find out who is tacking the bathrooms, they go to a, a Hannibal Lecter analog who is a notorious tagger. He's on, like, permanent detention. Like, <laughs> permanent detention! Right, like, <laughs> he's, uh, his parents drop him off, he goes into detention, and then after school, his parents pick him up. Right. Like, like his, permanent detention. His, his classes are piped into his cell. Right. <laughs> I'll need you to check in all writing instruments. Any ink, ink cartridges, pen refills, pencil leads, nibs, quills, chalk, crayons, charcoal, wax pencils. Any interior, exterior paint, spray paint, finger paint, poster paint, model paint, paint balls, paint brushes, airbrushes. Eyeliner, lipstick, mascara. Hey, me neither. Aha, uh -huh. follow me. Mr. Randall Julian is in what we call a permanent state of detention. His parents drop him off into our custody in the morning and pick him up again in the afternoon. His classes are piped into him via closed circuit TV. He currently maintains an A plus average. You may find our security measures extreme, but I assure you they are necessary. On November 3rd of this year, a custodian entered Mr. Julian's holding area with a miniature golf pencil in his back pocket. It took Mr. Julian 10 minutes to do this to the east wall. Dog. Hold up. He did that with a miniature golf pencil? I'll buzz you in. <laughs> and, and I love the fact that, you know, like, f first of all, the other, part, the other part of Fillmore that, especially when you go back to watch it, is like, okay, it's, it's very 2000s. <laughs> and, and so the tagger's name is Flavor Saver. Which I'm just like Flavor Saver. <laughs> like, oh my god. Like and it's like I'm sure like you know, like which makes it hilarious because it's like you, you say, okay, well Flavor Saver isn't very two thousand sounding per se, but keeping in mind that he had been in permanent detention, so that was his tagging name in the nineties. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like you know, albeit the late nineties, but right. but still the nineties. So he was flavor saver. <laughs> that they like, but but like the fact like they pipe into the classes, they 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 have to get rid of all of their writing utensils, like anything that could potentially you could potentially tag with. They have to remove from their person before they go in to see him because if he gets a hold. Of some sort of like writing utensil, something with ink or something with lead. <laughs> I was like, that's it. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh man. So let's talk about Fillmore, like the character, for a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a former delinquent. 
who got caught by a safety patroller, given a choice, permanent detention, or join the safety patrol. Mm -hmm. uh, he joins the safety patrol, and he has a partner that he works with, Ingrid Third, uh, who is basically a, a new transfer student, new to the force, but very bright, mm -hmm. and has a photographic memory. And uh, these characters are good. Like, yeah, they're they're so dimensional. Yeah, which is weird because you would think like the seventies cop shows were actually pretty one dimensional. Definitely, but they do go out of their way to like give these characters multiple dimensions, mm -hmm. uh, multiple things about them uh, that make them interesting to watch mm -hmm. uh, solving these cases. Yeah, no, I, I agree 100%. I mean, I don't know if we find out, like, Fillmore's background right off the jump in this first episode, but it is, like, cool to, like, learn about that character. And, and like, you, you definitely get to see why it is he's the way he is now through the course of the series and, and even in these, like, through the course of these first six episodes, where it's like, you know, there's a reason he's so dedicated to the safety patrol. You know, and then Ingrid Third uh, is an interesting character in and of herself as well. And I mean, just I mean, I, what I I really like the the juxtapositioning of the uh, the character design, where you know you have like like you said the the former delinquent gone straight in Fillmore, and he's like has a clean cut kind of more like a straight straight and narrow black kid kind of look and then you have ingrid third and you know she has like a goth girl kind of thing going on just that by itself i feel like is like a really cool like just looking at those two characters if i didn't know anything about them i'd be like oh like what's this about you know what i'm saying like well, mm -hmm. who are these two characters you know what's their story like why do they hang out together you know what i'm saying like it's like I would want to learn more. And I, I like the dynamic that they have with their partnership because they obviously both have a lot of respect for one another. And they, you know, like they they work together, but they're also friends. Right. So let's go episode two, Test of the Tested, which <laughs> the student body's taking a test. They call it the Sadi Nine. What do they call those tests where they're like one size fits all? Standardized tests. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's standard. <laughs> what happens is the answers get stolen and the kids are in a panic because they may have to take this test again, some of which the kids have been, like, basically going insane trying to study for, mm -hmm. getting super stressed out, mm -hmm. and the principal wants to test them to them, or else he's going to have to re-administer the test and wreck a lot of kids doing that. Mm -hmm. And this one is pretty interesting. Like, this is one of the episodes that I've actually heard people talk about in recent times. Oh, okay. Uh, with standardized testing kind of being, yeah, uh, you know, something worth talking about. You know, you got a lot of people, mm -hmm. um, for instance, uh, autistic people who basically can do well on these tests. They just need a little more time because mm -hmm. it takes them longer, mm -hmm. but the standardized test doesn't allow for that. Right. And so, you know, you've got issues where it kind of fucks over people with special needs. Mm -hmm. I mean, and some students, even without special needs, just don't test well. A single multiple choice test designed to measure the academic achievement of millions of different kinds of kids. One size fits all. The Sadie Nine. Has there been anything more pointless? Right. Yeah, but you're right. Like, I mean, the the idea is not everybody. Like, standardized tests aren't actually standardized. They're made for a particular type of a student. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And so, this episode is pretty good. Um, the tests are stolen by the school mascot. And when they go to find, like, uh, they go to look for him, they find that the mascot, the normal mascot, has been tied to a pole 
and the costume's been stolen. And so they have to find out who did it. Mm -hmm. um, you have protesters who are protesting the test, so they have to be investigated. Mm -hmm. uh, other suspects, and they kind of just are running through the whole thing until they eventually find the costume, which leads them to the true culprit. What did you think? Uh, it, it, it's a, another great episode. I mean, honestly, this is the, the, the joy of, of revisiting Fillmore. It's like you get to realize really just how well a lot of these stories hold up. And, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to mess around and make it seem as if Fillmore is like, uh, like the stories that you're going to see in Fillmore are going to be like mind blowing. They're just good stories, <laughs> you know. And and there is like a bit of mystery to you know what is happening in regards to these cases. Like they're really trying to solve them, <laughs> and it's like you know I I mean I feel like some episodes definitely do better than others in regards to like putting things out there where it's like if you're paying attention, you might be able to actually like solve the the crime. You know, others others are definitely more, you know, akin to maybe their like 70s influence where it's like, you know, sometimes they just kind of do a little hand wavy kind of thing. And it's like, yeah, it's obviously this guy, you know, <laughs> you know, but it's still either way, it's fun. And, you know, it's, it's interesting to watch. Uh, I, I, I I feel bad because like one one part of of these shows that or these episodes that I like so much is all of the chases. And I feel like this I feel like this episode has a particularly interesting chase in it, but I might be wrong because I you know I, I don't want I always feel bad. I don't want to say what I think it is because I don't want it to like I don't I, it, they all might be blending together. Because <laughs> every every episode pretty much has some sort of epic chase in it, um, epic for the the schoolyard scale, <laughs> you know. But which is cool because you know a lot of a lot of these shows did have those like they had the chases like they're like proto procedural kind of stuff like you knew what you were going to be getting week in and week out from these shows, and Fillmore stays true to that influence in the sense that. You pretty much understand what you're gonna get when you watch an episode of Fillmore. Uh, it's just gonna be the interesting part. I think is how they deliver it to you, <laughs> because right. you don't you don't know you don't know how in what way they're gonna twist the school around to like feel like they're cops on you know cops trying to solve some sort of you know crime in the city. You don't know, but yeah, this, this was a, a a great episode, and I, you know, like we're we're intentionally not trying to spoil any of this stuff, just because if you haven't seen Fillmore, you're gonna enjoy it, and we don't want to mess around and and take, you know, that away from you. <laughs> so, yeah, like I think the first episode in particular, like if you're paying attention, it mm -hmm. actually does pay off. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, as far as like the mystery and the detective work. Yeah, and so we if it's your first time viewing, mm -hmm. it's more I think more a little more engaging to kind of watch it without having like spoilers. And if you have watched it already, you know what we're talking about. Exactly, exactly. You're right. The first episode, the first episode is classic, man, and it's one of these things where. You know, for, for it to be a pilot, you know, I mean, so many shows that are even good shows, you know, the pilot is them usually trying to fi find their legs, find their footing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Fillmore knocks it out the park, like, episode one. <laughs> That's why when, I remember, like, like, like I, I, and I had mentioned this to you, uh, you know, off camera before, Jay, where going back to do this, I was thinking, like, you know, I remember Phil, Fillmore fondly, mm -hmm. but... You know, I was thinking like, okay, I mean, I think of it fondly, but I'm going to watch it now. And, you know, so much time has passed since 2002 that if some of that is going to be nostalgia and some of it's going to be like, no, it's a good show, you know. But I was like, man, I when I tell you I watched the first few episodes and I was like, man, I vastly underestimated how good this show really is because I could come back to it 20 years later 
Mm-hmm. And it, it's like it holds up 100%, man. So let's talk about episode three. Uh, worm in our midst. So in this one... Oops. I knew you'd be here sooner or later, Fillmore. Mr. Landrum, where are all the books? I... I don't know. This ain't good. Isn't. Isn't. Now, basically, the library has all of its books checked out, and none are returned. And it kind of... Yeah, like, the teacher doesn't notice it happening, and... When they're on the case, it basically just there's an empty library. Mm-hmm. And so they have to do the research to find out where the books have gone. And uh, their top suspect is a guy that basically a delinquent, a troublemaker, uh, known for like stealing things and selling them back to the owners and uh, they're basically trying to find basically just investigating this guy because he's like their top suspect. Mm -hmm. Now there's also a B-plot. During one of the chases Ingrid notices that there's a can of cola stuck in the ceiling and so she gets it down and tries to figure out how it got there. And this is our first real, uh, at least our first real character moment where we find out about Fillmore and his past. Yeah, no, absolutely. And look, just by itself, let's give kudos to the team over at Fillmore for putting a B plot into a 20 minute cartoon. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and don't get me wrong, I'm about to say that other people don't do it. Uh, because it, it happens, but it's not like common now. Yeah. It, it wasn't as much as common then, and it was done much more ineptly yeah. <laughs> than this. Like this, this it's amazing. It's amazing. And like you said, you you get the 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 character moments where you learn more about Cornelius Fillmore and who he is, and you definitely get insight into some of his flaws, and you also get insight into Ingrid as a character and who she is and how she feels about things, too. Right. And you get a forensics lesson on how to take fingerprints. (laughs) Right. Right. Okay. Basic fingerprinting. Lesson one. Take an everyday object, like Fillmore's coffee mug. Lightly dust it with talc. Cocoa will work too. Blow off the excess, and then carefully brush more dust off, leaving fingerprints. Want to keep the prints for your scrapbook? Take a strip of masking tape and lightly press it against a print. Peel it off, put it on a piece of black paper, and voila! Prints to go. It's like, I wonder if there were kids actually trying that out. Oh, I'm sure there were. <laughs> oh, it's good stuff, man. It's good yeah, stuff. It's good. Just watching these two cases play out, watching Ingrid kind of on her own doing her own detective work while they're trying to solve this case. Yeah, it's just really interesting. Yeah. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and, yeah, look... <laughs> I, I we're we're just gonna have to do like some sort of chase compilation because right. <laughs> I feel like there's so many epic chases in Fillmore that it's like you know it, I I I don't have the memory to mess around and s- sort them all out but I'm just like dude like just all types of wild things that like how they're able to use like everyday kind of objects around the school or on the school grounds and make it look as if they're having some sort of car chase. It's, it's, insane. it's insane. Right. Yeah. So I guess that takes us to number four, Cry the Beloved Mascot. 
where someone steals the middle school mascot, Lobsky the Lobster, mm -hmm. and they have to find him before the weekend's bocce ball tournament, because if they don't, morale will be down. Mm -hmm. And so they end up working with the psychic in order to find this mascot. Right. Right. And, uh, yeah, this is just so funny. Like, it's funny how this episode is probably the most timeless episode of Fillmore. Because there are people, like, that are acting like the psychic today. Like, I've seen people like him. Also, too, I think it's interesting. Like, I, I know we haven't mentioned it at this at this point, but the 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 school is ex middle school, right? And I'm kind of like, you know, I I don't from like I don't remember if they ever talk about why it's ex middle school. Like, is it just like ex generic, like you know, like unknown or no name middle school? Or is it like named after like Malcolm X? Like, which probably would not be the case. Like the same way how you have Jefferson Middle School, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, right. I was like, I don't know if I would, if, if you know, they were quite that progressive at Disney. But, <laughs> you know. I mean, you never know. It's like, yeah, just having a black lead. True. In cartoon in 2002. Yeah. Um, True. Is in twenty. In 2021, it'd be impressive. <laughs> like, let alone 2002. But right. yeah, I hear you. But yeah, I, I would agree. They probably won't be going for unknown yeah. middle school. Yeah, probably. And then the other part is going back and watching it. Like, you know, there's a lot of little things that I didn't remember about the show. And like, I, like going back to episode one, I remember watching it. And, you know, they do, they cut the ribbon for the bathroom and they open it up. And on the wall, the back wall of the bathroom is like a lobster on the wall. And I was like, why is there a lobster on the wall? Like, I was like, I was like it just seemed like such a strange choice to me. And then as we go on into episode like two and three, I'm like, oh, the lobster is the mascot for the school, <laughs> which is like, who has a lobster as their, as their mascot? And it's like, who who even thinks to do that? You know what I mean? It seems, it's, yeah, it's it's a wild choice, but it's pretty amazing. Right. So yeah. I think that takes us to Red Robins Don't Fly. Mm. And another great character episode. Yeah. Uh, the Red Robins are... This is the ex-middle school chapter of the Red Robins, the number one ranking taffy sellers in the entire country. We've known that the Robin success wasn't exactly legit. We've been after them for years for pushing out other clubs, snatching their candy and dumping it. But we could never get the evidence. Then that band candy was pulled out of the drink last week. We thought we finally had them until we figured out that candy was old. Ten years at least ditched by Red Robins, who are long gone from X. And so, because Ingrid's new and unknown, they end up sending her undercover. Right. Infiltrate this uh, gang and figure out where all the stolen stuff is. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is awesome. Like, we find out about, about Ingrid. We find out about uh, Chief Vallejo. Mm-hmm. And uh, you really see the dynamic between Fillmore and Ingrid. Right. This episode. And, and um, it definitely touches on that whole trope of, like, you know, the idea you go into cover. You might get in too deep. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is cool to do. Like, it's amazing to do in the setting of a grade school. <laughs> you know, it's just so crazy. Again, like one of these things where it's like, okay, how do you make a school feel like a city, like it's sprawling and all that kind of stuff? And it's like, yeah, part of that is you have like street gangs, right? <laughs> you have criminal criminal enterprises, and for them to decide to make that, you know, a version of the Girl Scouts is hilarious and really, really interesting. But it it works. There's not much, too much you could say. There's no 
not a lot of mystery. It really is just an undercover story. Mm -hmm. um, we already know who the culprit is. It's kind of mm -hmm. just how they're going to fall down. Uh, is in grid in too deep. But I mean, it all works. It does. So what's our our last episode for this episode, for this special? <laughs> uh, next up, Armageddon. So during one of these chase scenes, it kind of opens up with a chase scene, epic chase scene, but they end up ruining... Folsom Surprise Party, Fillmore? Folsom Surprise Party, Fillmore? The birthday committee worked for months on this thing. Well, she was surprised. All the days you could have picked to tick off Folsom. You gotta go for her birthday? Or it is, it starts with a four this year. Vallejo, that thug was trying to replace quarters with waferitas. You know that money is supposed to go to the Hay Fever Society for their annual blowout. I don't care if he was taking eggs from the blasted Easter Bunny. I don't need this kind of heat right now. Look, Folsom's taking you off the beat for a while. I'm assigning you two to convention duty. Convention duty? Filet! Now go clean up. The principal's surprise party. And so they get demoted to convention duty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so regarding this convention, a uh, model train convention, and it has like one of the worst accidents in model train convention history. <laughs> and it ends up being a work of sabotage and they have to figure out who did it Man. and why. Um, another interesting, another point of this episode also is a uh, Fillmore's goldfish that he's had for years dies mm -hmm. and he's having trouble coping with it. Yeah. And so he's like using the case to ignore it. Listen, Thelonious was a good fish. Was, but he's gone. You need to move on. <laughs> no, I need to figure out who caused this train wreck before Folsom puts us on permanent convention watch. And other people are trying to help him grieve, but he just doesn't want to hear about it. And he just wants to focus on the case. And so he's throwing himself into the case in order to ignore the fact that his one of his closest friends, someone that's been there for him through thick and thin, has passed away. Mm -hmm. And I will say, man, it's like that's it, it's a it's a heavy issue, but it's handled very deftly in this show. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't it doesn't ever feel too heavy. But at the same time, it still has the, the, the gravity that it should have. And, you know, like you can, I mean, if I could only imagine what it would be like watching that as a child, like you can literally learn that lesson from that episode that, you know, or at least learn the lesson of the idea that you need to, you know, confront those feelings and actually like feel what you need to feel in order to get past or get not past, but to come through the other side of, of grief. It has been said that grief is the agony of an instant, the indulgence of grief, the blunder of a life. One must say goodbye before anything becomes good again. Hmm. Too much grief, not enough life. Right. And uh, again, we actually have a pretty good chase scene that happens off school grounds. I don't remember this one. Well, basically, they confront the suspect, and it's like, after school and they confront him at a certain place and they do have a chase, which I know the main reason I I think about this chase scene mm -hmm. is because it does happen off school grounds. Mm -hmm. It's like... Oscar, we'd like you to come with us. Well, the thing you have to consider is... <gasps> we got a train to catch. You're too late. My plan worked, you see. My dad just renewed the lease on the store for another year. We don't have to move. Nothing has to change. You're wrong about that. You may still be in town, and you may still have a train store, but things are going to change. Once word of what you did gets out, you lose your model train license, your fans, your position in the train club. Sorry, officer, but this is your stop.
End of the line, Oscar. You don't understand. I couldn't move. I have a life here. Thing about life is, you can't stop it from changing. And you can't make it turn right or left with a battery operated control. Hobbies change, model trains give way to RC cars, goldfish die. You gotta be willing to move on, man. Ingrid, can you take Oscar in? I've got some business to take care of. Cool. Here's a coupon. It's just this world they've made. Yeah. And, like, the safety patrol should not be outside of the <laughs> Right. You would think that'd be outside the jurisdiction, but no, no, yeah. they got it. Like, yeah, they're there. The safety right. patrol matter. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's it's so interesting, this world. Yeah, because it really is. They do us, like, ridiculous, like, it seems ridiculous, but they make it fit. They make it work. Yeah. Like, there's even an episode where, like, they call Fillmore after school, and he has to go to the school at night to, like, work on a case. Right, right. Where it's he like, to with his parents. <laughs> right. And his parents are totally down with it, too. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Right, like, that's your job. Like, right. you're in safety patrol. <laughs> right. And which is wild because in that episode, they also kind of talk about, like, work life balance. And it's right. like, dude, like this this show. Look at this show. <laughs> yeah, man, it's good stuff. That's real good stuff. Yeah. So, with that said, we're gonna go ahead and and wrap this up for now. Uh, obviously, there's much more film more to talk about. Uh, we we enjoy talking about this show. If you enjoy watching us talk about it, please go ahead, like the video, subscribe. Uh, to the channels, hit that notification bell. Also, put down in the comments what you think of what we're talking about. If you, whether you've seen Fillmore in the past and you have opinions on some of the episodes that we talked about, or if you're new to Fillmore because you watch this video and you're like, hey, you know, this sounds interesting. Let me give it a check. Let me check it out. Let us know that too. And let us know what you think. Let us know if we're on the point. If you think we're totally off base. Uh, I'm Mayor Young. That's Jay. <laughs> and uh, also, I should mention, check out Fantastic Forum every Wednesday night, 6.30 Pacific uh, p.m., 6.30 p.m. Pacific, if you want to hear us talk about animation, anime, comic books, uh, movies, television. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you next time.